Hi there, my name is Jimmy, I'm from Italicat Tuition School and I'm currently a math tutor in this centre. Currently, I specialise in teaching math in the upper secondary as well as the JC level. And this centre, we are using this three-step learning process to help our students prepare for the exams. The first step is called internalising, where we will help our students to summarise the whole chapter into a piece of first paper and help, help them to memorise it. Second step is application, where it's where we will categorize all the different types of questions into different categories and make sure that our students are able to answer each category. And the third step is called mastery, is where we will help our students to master each type of questions such that when they open their exam script, they'll be able to answer each type of question with 100% accuracy. And without further ado, in this video, I would like to share with you how I internalize this chapter called functions which belongs to one of the chapters in the GC H2 math and hopefully you will find it useful in this video and help you internalize information. And so let's let's get started. Okay, for functions, there are three types of functions that you need to know. The first type is what you learn in secondary school, just a simple recap. It's called single functions. For example, fx, gx. So let's give a, a, a simple example, right? fx, x plus 1. Alright? This is the function. That means I'm mapping x into x plus 1. And usually behind function, you will see this thing called the domain. Alright? For example, x belongs to 0 and 2. Alright? So what does this mean? This means that x will take only take values between 0 and 2. Alright, no other values. And so how does the function work? Alright, basically it works like this. Remember x will take values between 0 and 2. So we have uh, 0, 1, 2. Of course that's 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3, but I just take the integers right, for, sim for simplicity. Okay, so from 0 plus 1, what will we give you? It will give you 1, 1 plus 1 will give you 2, and 2 plus 1 will give you 3. Alright, so this is what functions do. Functions will map the values here into another value. Alright, and this thing here is called the domain. Alright, let's turn for it. And these values here are called the range. Okay, and so this is the domain and this is the range. Alright, we can write the range in this format. Range of f equals to 1, 2, 3. Okay, this is a square bracket. Square bracket stands for inclusive. If I have a curly bracket, then it's exclusive. Alright, that means it takes value between 1 and 3 but does not include. 1 and 3. Alright? And so this is the domain and this is the range. And so if we sketch out the graph, right, it will be something like this. Remember, the domain is only between 0 and 2, right? So you only sketch a graph between 0 and 2. Nothing less, nothing more. And the graph will look like this. Between 1, 2, 2 plus 1, you get 3. Alright, this is how the graph looks like. And so the domain, okay, please be clear about this the domain is the part of the x axis. Alright, and the range is 1 to 3. Can you see the range? Is part of the y axis. Okay, I repeat again domain belongs to part of the x axis and range belongs to part of the y axis. Okay, and this is for single functions. Nothing new, you should learn this in your old level last time. It's just a, just a do a simple recap. Okay, the second type of functions that you need to learn is called inverse functions. Alright, so what does inverse function do? Very simply put, it will 
map these values back into the original value. That's why it's called inverse function. You map from A to B, so inverse function will map from B back to A. Alright? So how to find inverse function? Let's take this for example. First step, let y equals to x plus 1. Second step, make x a subject. So x equals to y minus 1. Therefore, my f inverse x, you just change the y back to x, you'll get x minus 1. Okay? So this is how you find inverse function. And so we use the same thing here. Remember what I said earlier is mapping the values here back to the original value, right? So I will get 1, 2, 3. I will go back to 1 minus 1, you get 0. 2 minus 1, you get 1. And 3 minus 1, you get 2. Alright, you can see I'm just going back. This is called inverse function. Okay. One very important point I think now is now this is the domain and this is the range. So what do you notice? A very important lesson to take away. I put a star here, means it's a very important point, you must know this, which is the domain of F inverse is equal to the range of f, can you see? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Alright, so domain of f inverse is the same as the range of f, which is equal to 1, 2, 3. And the range of f inverse will be equal to the, the domain of f. Alright, the range of f inverse is the domain of f, 0, 1, 2 is 0 to 2. Alright? So these two are very important properties that you need to know. And another point I think though is you need to know the condition. Alright? The condition for F inverse function will exist. And the condition is it must be a 1 to 1 function. Okay, so what is a 1 to 1 function? Let's give an example. Say for example, I have, uh, I have fx equals to x squared, x belongs to real, alright, means x can take all the values, alright, and so this will be a quadratic curve, right, something like this, a quadratic curve, okay, so is this a one to one function, the answer is no. How do you tell? Very simply put, you draw a horizontal line across, if it cuts at two points, alright, it's not a one-to-one -one function. Can you see? I draw a horizontal line across, it cuts at two points. So, if it's not a one-to-one -one function, F inverse cannot exist. Okay, I repeat again, if it's not a one-to-one -one function, F inverse cannot exist. So, what do we have to do? Very simply put, we have to cut away either this part here or this part here in order to make it a one-to-one -one function, right? You see? If I cut away this part here, I'll be only left with, with this part, right? And so if I cut a horizontal line across, I only cut at one point. So it becomes a one-to-one -one function and F inverse can exist. Alright? So I have to restrict, okay, the keyword is restrict, domain to x more than or equal to 0 or x less than or equal to 0 alright because it's either here or here okay so this is for inverse function first of all you need to know how to find the inverse function secondly you need to know the properties of inverse function which is the domain of f inverse is the range of f range of f inverse is domain of f Right? And last but not least, very importantly, you need to know what is the condition for F inverse, for the inverse function to exist. Yeah. And we finally come to the last type of function, which are called conversive function. Right? What is conversive function means there are two functions together, or two or more, it can be 
FF, FG, GH, right? Two functions on my side. So let's give an example. Let's use FX as the same function. FX, X plus 1, X belongs to 0 and 2. And say for example, GX is uh, X minus 2, X belongs to 1 and 2. One and let's try 1 and 4, right? Okay, and so let's say I want to find FGX. Okay, it's very simple. I need to put GX into F. Okay, take note now. I'm not putting F into G. You take the one inside here and put into F. So it's like FGX. That means I'm putting G into F and not F into G. Okay, please don't be confused by this. Unless it's GF. Then I'm putting F into G. Alright? Please be clear about this. And when I'm putting G into F, so I'll, I'll, what I do is I put the GX here into the X here, right? So I'll get X minus 2 plus 1. Right? Putting the GX into X here. So I'll get X minus 1. Alright? This is how you find conversive function. And so how does it look like we draw this diagram? Okay, first of all, you start from the domain of G first, right? Because G starts first. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 to 4, right? I just put the integer value. Alright? So it maps to G first, right? I mentioned, right? G comes first. Okay, so 1 minus 2 will give you minus 1. 2 minus 2 give you 0. 3 minus 2 give you 1. And 4 minus 2 give you 2. Then flow by F. Correct? So minus 1 plus 1. Okay. Let's, let, we do from the bottom first. 2 plus 1 give you 3. 1 plus 1 give you 2. 0 plus 1 give you 1. Okay, now, very importantly, look at this value here. Minus 1. Can F take minus 1? You can't, right? Because the domain is only between 0 and 2. Minus 1 does not belong to the domain of f, right? And so, this value we are not able to map by f. You get what I mean? The minus 1 does not belong to the domain here, right? So therefore, it's not able to map to f. So do you see a problem here? fg cannot exist. Alright? So therefore, we come to the most important condition for conversive function. Condition for fg to exist. Alright? Is range of g must be a subset of domain of f. Alright? The range of g will be this one must be a subset of the domain of f. Can you see? That means the values here cannot be more than the values here. If not, fg cannot exist. Alright? So this is a condition for fg to exist. The range of g has to be a subset of the domain of f. Okay? And so for this example, how do we make fg exist? Okay, we have to take out which value? We have to restrict the domain of, remember right, this is the domain of G, right? We have to take away this value. So we need to restrict, once again the keyword again, restrict the domain of G to 2 to 4. Alright? And so once we restrict, right, we have these values. 2, 3, 4, domain of G. After going through G, you become 0, 1, 2. Alright, and now you can see that 0, 1, 2 can fall inside F, right? And so therefore, you will get 1, 2, 3. Alright, this is the range of G, and this is the range of F, G. Okay? 
So this is how you get the com the composite vertices. You need to restrict the domain such that the range of the G is a subset of the domain of the F. Okay. And from here we can know the what's the domain of FG, right? The domain of FG is the same as the domain of G. This is starting point, right? So it's the same as the domain of G, which is equal to, in this example, 2 to 4. And the range of FG, right, is the same as the range of F. In this example is the same as between 1 to 3. That's it. This is how we internalize the whole function chapter. Okay, first of all, you need to be clear there are three types of function. You need to know what the properties, condition for existence, how to find the inverse function, and very importantly, how to find the domain and range. Because these are the type of questions that E-Level usually asks. And so this is the first step for the link process, which I mentioned earlier is called internalizing. Is where we will summarize the whole chapter into a piece of paper. Alright, but of course that's not all. You have to practice and practice the questions, right? So we come to the second step, is where we will categorize all the questions into the different type of functions. How to find range, how to find domain, what's the condition of existence. You will cover all this in the questions. And finally, through all the applications and all the practice, you'll be able to reach mastery phase. We are able to get the result you want in your A level. And so once again, my name is Jimmy. Uh, we, I'm teaching math in this Intellectual Tuition School. We are located in a 1030 Upper Serangoon Road, just opposite Serangoon JC, and we are just a 5 minutes walk away from Covey MRT. And so if you have any inquiries, do give us a call at 6280-6841, and I look forward to see you in my class one day. Thank you.